when you are doing your computing, you must not entrust that to somebody else's server because users, including you, should have control over their own computing. But you can never have control over what somebody else's server does because somebody else installs software in that computer and configures it and thus decides what computing it's going to do. So it may be useful to talk with somebody else's server as a way of communicating with per, with somebody else. Servers are fine for that. If I want to publish something that I say and you want to see what I said, connecting to my server, stallman.org, is a fine way to do it. And running a server for that purpose is a fine way of conveying the information to those who are interested. The GNU project has its own things to say, which are different from my personal views, so it has a different server, gnu.org. And again, it's fine for the GNU project to use a server as a way of enabling you to see what the GNU project has to say if you're interested. And the Free Software Foundation has another server, fsf.org, which gives other or other information about a related part of the issue of free software. But uh, when it comes to doing your computer, you shouldn't entrust anyone else's server, not stallman.org, not gnu.org, not fsf.org, not google.com or apple.com or Basically, anyone else that sets up a server is not you. And that person or organization's server is not your computer. It's not under your control. And so you shouldn't depend on that server to do your computing, which means that a very widespread architecture that is quite commonly recommended by people who don't think about this issue is a bad way to do computing. You shouldn't, it, it might be perfectly fine to use a certain free program by running it on your computer. That way you can change it if you want. But to have the same program running in somebody else's server and you just connect to that server, well, you can't change the version of the program that's running in that server because it's the server is not yours. So it's not just which comp which program you're talking to, it's who's running it that matters in terms of your freedom. For your freedom, it should be you running that free program so you can modify it. If it's running in my server, well, that's my copy and I can modify it, but you can't. At least you can't put the modifications into the copy running in my server. So that's not good for your freedom. Now, one very visible aspect of this danger is that there are a lot of programs which people think of as sort of like free or open source which impose limits on what users can do with them. Now, that can't be the case if you install a free program and run it. A free program respects freedom zero, which is the freedom to run the program however you wish. But <clears throat> there are programs such as El Llama, or is it Yama, I don't know, uh, but the point is, it's not free software because in its license, it says that you have to agree to a contract in order to use it. And that contract has a long list of things that you're committing never to use it for. It makes no difference whether those things are are bad things or okay things. The point is that a company 
should never have that kind of power over society. What would happen if society were to pick up the use of, quote, of this, quote, open source, unquote, program, and everybody was expected to agree to the license restrictions on use that are included in that El Lama license. It wasn't easy for me to get to see it. You have to run non-free software in order to download a copy of the license. I had someone send it to me. I hope I, that, uh, that that person won't get sued for copyright infringement for sending me a copy of the license. 